peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the Vogue 8972 sew along and we're going to be making this dress, but not for a woven, for a stretch. Yes, this is blue leopard print scuba. Leopard print is totally a neutral, so this is the perfect dress to add to my collection. Now, I just wanted to say I'm definitely no expert. This is a silhouette that I loved. I wanted to make it in a stretchy fabric. I wanted to see if that would work and I'm really pleased with the results. There were probably much more technical ways of doing this, but this is just the way that has worked for me. This is a three-part series. Today we're going to be finding the correct size that we need to trace, tracing our pattern, and altering our pattern. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay peeps, you're gonna need your pattern, your fabric. I am using a scoop of fabric and I am obviously using a lot more than this. I have already cut mine out. As I say, this is a scuba. I have not tested this pattern for any other type of stretch fabric. Something similar weight and stretch to a scuba will work. Clear elastic, French curve, pencil, tape measure, pins, tape, tracing paper. I get mine from More Plan and it's in a massive roll so I'm not going to attempt to put it on this pile of goodies. You'll also need matching thread. I'm going to be using my overlocker but a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch will work just as well. Okay so we have the pattern envelope, the first page of instructions and I have ironed out my tissue and you must iron your tissue because even the littlest creases in tissue paper can affect the final size of your pattern. So iron your tissue paper. Anyway, what this is a custom fit pattern, which means that they have drafted for A, B, C and D cups. Now that doesn't mean the bra cup that you would buy from your local high street store. You have to do these measurements. So you need to take your bust measurement, wearing the bra that you want to wear with this dress, by the way, because that will make a difference. So you take your bust measurement, and that's around the fullest part of your bust. Write that one down there, mine's 39. And then you take your high bust measurement, which is um, under the arm and across the top of the bust. And there is a diagram here, mine's 35. So I have a difference of four inches. And then you look down at this uh, size chart here, and up to four inches means that I want the D cup, which means I want pattern pieces seven and eight. Because they have drafted, as you can see here, the A cup, the B cup, the C cup, and the D cup. Now, this, these ones that we've circled here are mum's pattern pieces. So I have made myself a list of the pattern pieces that I need to trace out. So I need all of these different pattern pieces to be traced. And this is why we trace patterns, because mums use these, and obviously, as you can see, they are she that she needs different size pieces from me. That's fine for cutting them out, but the bits that I need the same as her, she has a different size to me, so if I'd have cut them out for mum's size, then I wouldn't be able to do them for mine. So the next thing that you want to do is find out the size that you want to measure. Now, on the back of the envelope, these are what your measurements are and then what they say you should what size pattern they that you they say you should cut out so because my bust is a 39 technically i should really cut out an 18 or a 16 in between those two so this pattern is designed for wovens but we're going to be making out of a stretch fabric and with stretch fabrics you want to have negative ease or no wearing ease at all that's personally how I like my stretch dresses to fit. So this is the C cup body, so it's not quite exactly the same, but for the th I, I have a 39 inch bust, so I would be um, tracing, for me personally, I would trace this size 12 because the finish measurement is written on the pattern piece here and it says it's a 38 and a half inch finish measurement. And for a stretch fabric, you want there to be negative ease at the bust so that it fits and clings nicely. Now you can change that at the waist. So here we have the front yoke, which is the waist where the waist will sit. 
So with this one, you can go for negative ease or you can go for your, your exact waist measurement. I'm going for my exact waist. Well, I'm actually going for a little bit of negative ease, but this will be my exact waist measurement. So I'm going to do the size six, which will give me a finished garment of 27 and a half inches. And again, bear in mind, this is for a stretch fabric. If you were doing this for wovens, you want at least an inch of wearing ease in there. So I would be going for the size eight. But because it is stretch, we're going to go, I'm going to go for the size six, which is 27 and a half inches finished waist measurement. So I'm going to be making the full skirted option with the sleeves, the long sleeves. If you want to make the slimline pencil line version, then you just need to find the hip measurements on your pattern pieces. But you just need to find your hip measurements. And again, personally, I would go for... If I was going to be doing the pencil skirt version, I would go for either my exact measurement or maybe give it a half an inch of extra ease because I wouldn't want there to be any pull lines or for the skirt to wiggle up, which it could possibly do if you went for your exact measurements. Definitely don't go for negative ease on the hips. That would be my advice. Okay, so this is the back yoke piece and I'm doing a size 10 at the top for the bust and then I'm grading it in to a size six at the waist. And because I'm using the full skirt, I'm just tracing the size six so that I don't have to worry about wiggling from there right out to there. Although, I mean, that is possible. So what you wanna do is when you trace these out, you wanna include your center back because we are going to make our pattern piece a piece that you cut on the fold not that you have to cut two of and seam and this seam this line here is slightly curved so if you if you um draw in your center back which is a straight line that's where we're going to be cutting off the five eighths of an inch seam allowance from there with using this as our straight line guide and then they have marked this is one of the things i love about big four patterns they've marked on the waistline so this is where i need it to be the size six so what i've done is I've done the size six at the bottom, gone up to just above the waistline here. I've then traced the size 10 at the top, which ends here. And then I've used my French curve and found a gentle line between the two. So from, from about the eight inch mark there, that's a nice gentle curve into the size six from the 10 at the top. And that's how I've traced it. I've shown you this way rather than um, with the paper on top because it would be a little bit more difficult to see. But that's what the beauty of these things is. You want to be able to um, use use this curved line to, to make adjustments in patterns when you need to. So I've been ticking off my pattern pieces as I have traced them off and now we need to alter them. So this dress is designed for woven fabrics as I've said and it is designed to be lined. So we need to address how we are going to finish the neckline on the dress because lots of uh, stretch dresses call for you just to overlock it and then turn it over and stitch it. I personally don't like that look. So what I'm gonna do is take off the seam allowance and then I'm gonna measure it and then I'm gonna draft a neck band for, to, to, uh, for this pattern. Um, I'm also going to take out the center back seam of the back bodice, the back yoke and the back skirt piece. Okay, so now we're going to start doing some alterations. This is the yoke back. I marked in the centre back and that is... Five eighths of an inch away from the uh, seam line. So that's the seam allowance because if it had been a woven, you'd need to insert a zip so that you could get in and out of it. We don't need that, so we're going to eliminate that. So literally, just draw a line along the centre back the whole way through the pattern piece and then add in a grain line and or a cut on the fold mark. So I'm going to do that now. So I've taken off and as you can see this this line here is slightly curved and if we're cut, cutting on the fold we need it to be straight which is why I went along the centre back line there. I've then put in a mark to say that you need to cut one on the centre on the on the fold which I have marked on my pattern piece here because I, knew need, I needed to do all that already. Uh, this is the length and the shorten line. This is a Vogue pattern. Every single one of these I have to add an inch which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to add an inch of extra room along the length and the shorten line. If you 
this is just a standard i have not made this dress before and i'm not making a muslin for it but this is a standard alteration that i have to do to every vogue mccall's and butterick pattern that i have come across so i'm going to do it now okay so i've cut it out so i'm now going to cut along this line here before i do that i want to make sure um, that i have a line that intersects perpendicular which i do here the grain line and that's just so you can put stick your pieces down accurately when you come to do that so I've marked on the inch that I want to lengthen my pattern piece by. It will vary depending on what, how much you need to lengthen yours by. And then I've put on the perpendicular line, which I will then match up the pieces with when they're cut. Okay, so I've stuck my pattern pieces down. I have lined up the grain line with the line that I drew through the extra inch that I needed to add. I have connected those lines there, and then I have just connected these lines here so this is my bodice back and we need to remove the seam allowance from this again because we're not putting a zip in we also need to move the seam allowance from the neckline because we are going to be putting in a neck band which we will draft after we have done all of this removal of seam allowance so i'm going to cut this out cut those bits off and then i'm going to put a mark down here just saying that i need to cut on the fold and i've already put here cut one on the fold so the seam allowance on this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch. That's what I've removed here and from around the neckline. And with my French curve for the neckline, this inner line here. So this inner line here is 5 eighths of an inch, so I've used that one. And then on the straight line, I use the 5 eighths of an inch on this mark here. And again, I'd marked on the center, I'd marked on the center back as there was a straight line for that on the pattern. So I'd mark that on and use that as my guide. I've also taken the uh, 5 eighths of an inch off of the neckline and the bodice front as well. They're the two pieces that you need to alter for the to add, to add in the neck band. So it's the bodice front and the bodice back that you take 5 eighths of an inch off at the neckline. I have my skirt back piece here and again there's the, I've marked on the centre back seam. There is a 5 eighths of an, an, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance added onto this that we need to remove so that we can cut one on the fold. So I'm going to draw a straight line the whole way down and then just trim that off. So I've trimmed the extra seam allowance on. I've then put in the um, cut on the fold line and that's that piece finished. I do want to just add that I've actually lengthened my skirt pieces by two inches as well because I know that the skirt is was going to be a little bit too short for me. So I, I by doing that, I, I literally just added two inches onto the hemline. And if you need to shorten it, you can do the same thing. Take it up by however many inches that you want from the hemline. The final thing that we need to do is work out how long our neck band needs to be. So I'm going to use my... A tape measure and I am going to measure the neck band obviously I will do this slightly better with two hands when I'm not holding the camera but I'm going to write that down I'm going to measure the front bodice curve as well and I'll write that down you then need to times both of those by two and then take off the seam allowance so I'll show you what I mean so I've measured the curve of the front bodice and that was nine and a quarter and I need to times that too because this is on the fold. I've then measured the curve of the back neckline, the neckline on the back bodice and that is six and a quarter and I need to times that by two because that's also on the fold. So there's five eighths of an inch seam allowance at the shoulder. So there's times two for the back, times two for the front, so that's four. So we need to do all those maths and I have a handy dandy fraction calculator which I highly recommend you download. So this is my fraction calculator, so 9 and 1 quarter times 2 equals 18 and a half and 6 and 1 quarter times 2 equals 12 and a half and then 5 eighths times 4 equals 2 and a half. So we're going to add those all together. So we've got 18 and one half plus 12 and one half equals, that's 31. And then we need to minus the seam allowance. So we want to minus 
two and a half inches and that gives us a neckline of 28 and a half inches front bodice and the back bodice together is 31 taking off the seam allowance which was two and a half so we end up with 28 and a half and i have found for me personally for scuba i take off another four inches to give me a neck band that works so we're going to need a neck band of 24 and a half inches so I'm going to divide that by two because I'm going to cut mine on the fold so that means it's going to be 12 and a quarter inches long so I've drawn it's one and a half inches wide and then it's 12 and a quarter inches long and I'm going to cut one of those on the fold and I'm going to use a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to uh, finish this raw edge If you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below and i'll try and answer them the best i can i really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye